Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Munfordville, known locally as the Battle for the Bridge, located in Hart County, Kentucky on September 14th to the 17th, 1862. As part of the invasion of Kentucky, Confederate General Braxton Bragg left Chattanooga, Tennessee in late August with more than 30,000 men. The Union General Don Carlos Buell was attempting to intercept him before he reached U.S. Colonel John T. Wilder's troops at Fort Craig. Fort Craig was an entrenched stockade surrounded by earthworks at the Green River across from the town of Munfordville. This position allowed the fort to protect one of the largest railroad bridges across the Green River, the Louisville and Nashville Railroad Bridge. Situated more than 100 feet above the water, the bridge was responsible for allowing trains to bring the much-needed supplies for the Union Army. Word reached Wilder ahead of Bragg that a large Confederate force was coming. Wilder reached out to the Union headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky to request reinforcements. The scouting Confederate forces arrived at Munfordville with the idea to take the fort. The Confederates offered surrender to the outnumbered fort, but Colonel Wilder rejected the offer and the Confederate scouts relayed this back to command. Confederate General James Ronald Chalmers decided to take things into his own hands. Without orders to do so, General Chalmers' brigade traveled 15 miles from their station at Cave City towards Munfordville. Their intention to take the fort was misinformed by erroneous reports stating there were no more than 1,800 men at the fort and that all of those men were raw recruits. In the morning of September 14th, Chalmers attacked in what turned out to be a poorly planned assault on the fort and Union Colonel Wilder's men easily repulsed him, inflicting heavy losses on the Confederate forces. In the first day of the battle, the Confederates had 35 men killed and 253 men wounded, while the Union only suffered a combined total of 75 men killed and wounded. During the day, Union reinforcements had arrived under the command of Union Colonel Cyrus L. Dunham, bringing the fort's numbers to just a little more than 4,000 men. Dunham took over the command of the fort at this time. Confederate General Braxton Bragg arrived as well with the rest of his army. Not wanting to engage in a multi-day battle and not wanting to leave the Union fort behind him, Bragg asked for Dunham's surrender. Dunham, after talking with Bragg, radioed back to Union command and told them of his intention to surrender. Suffice to say, Dunham was summarily removed from command and Wilder was put back in charge. Later that day, Wilder entered into a truce with Bragg to discuss surrender. Evidently, things weren't going to go well for Union command no matter what they wanted. Wilder was escorted into the Confederate camp. There he witnessed that there was more than 25,000 Confederate soldiers and more than 45 cannons against his very few cannon and 4,000 men. Wilder decided to surrender, and on September 17th, Wilder officially surrendered the fort to Braxton Bragg. Bragg decided to parole the Union soldiers and released 155 Union officers and 3,921 soldiers as they burned the bridge down. The victory itself was short-lived. Bragg moved on into Kentucky, and the Union immediately moved back into the fort without a shot fired. In addition, the Union built two more forts near that location later in the war. The final casualties of the fight were approximately 4,148 killed, wounded, and captured for the Union. Meanwhile, the Confederates had only suffered 714 men killed and wounded and missing during the battle. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.